pleases God. I'm not just a hearer. I'm a doer. This word has given me life and life more abundantly. Look at somebody and say, I don't care what your circumstances say. Amen. If you remain standing, please go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 26. Galatians 3, 26. Amen. If you buy Genesis, that's the wrong way. I don't want to go the other way. How many folk you need to hear something from God today? You really just, you're going to hear from him today. Hallelujah. Galatians 3. Hallelujah. Verse number 26, when you have it, say amen. amen. For you are all, and I was here last week, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Say, I'm not a slave. I'm, a slave. I'm, a I'm a son. Slaves have to beg. Sons get it by virtue of inheritance. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, Male nor female, for you are all what? And if you are Christ, look at somebody say, I am his. Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, now, now say Abraham's seed. Well, now let's find out what kind of man Abraham was so that you understand what kind of man or woman you got to be. Because if you're his seed, you ought to look like him. Yeah. All right, go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. You ought to have his attributes. Please understand, for those of you who may not know what I'm talking about, when we say Abraham's seed, in, in Scripture, in Genesis 12, the Lord makes a promise to Abraham. And he says, Abraham, I'm going to bless those that bless you. I'm going to curse those that curse you. And from that covenant, say covenant. From that agreement, we, we have been grafted in as Christians. God gives us, as not natural-born Jewish people or Hebrew people, God gives us access to the same benefits of that covenant. Whoever blesses you, God's going to bless, but whoever curses you, God's going to curse. And if you study that covenant or that uh, agreement God made with Abram, it made him so rich that the Bible says the land couldn't hold him. Now, now, Bishop, what does that mean for you and I today? That means it's not God's idea for you to be messed up, jacked up, bad relationships, bad family, bad marriage, bad finance. That ain't God's idea. Do you understand that? So that's what we say when we're Abraham's seed. What we're saying is, is we're entitled to the covenant Abraham had. You got that? Now, Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, go to verse 8. Y'all all right? By faith. Say by faith. Abraham obeyed so okay so he was obedient then when he was called to go out to the place where he would receive an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going go to verse 17 by faith Abraham when he was tested offered up Isaac and he who received the promises offered up his what so Abram was a man full of faith so if I'm full of faith, must mean I'm what? Faithful. One more scripture. Go back to Galatians. Back to Galatians. One more scripture. I want you to get today because say position. Uh, when you leave here today, you're going to be in position now to walk in all of that stuff that you've been dreaming about and thinking about and hoping and wishing and praying, but it never could come to pass. And the reason it couldn't come to pass is because if you don't understand faithfulness, God can't trust you with anything. Look at somebody and say, he can trust me. Galatians 5.22. Let's look at this now. Right before here, uh, they list out the works of the flesh or how we know we're walking in the flesh. What does that mean? Doing it our way. So Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the spirit, meaning I'm doing it his way, is love, come on, say it with me, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, wait a minute, wait, 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 faithfulness, full of faithness, gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law, encourage somebody next to you on your way down, say neighbor, neighbor. You've, been you've been redeemed from the curse of unfaithfulness. 
Father, I decrease that you might increase. Speak to us now in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Please understand, I started talking about this last week uh, as we are in this month of uh, history. Please understand, you do not have to be behind bars to be in prison, nor do you have to be in shackles to be a slave. The fact of the matter is that uh, a lot of saints walk around with invisible handcuffs on that are boxes that they have placed their lives in and they don't know how to get free and they don't know how to get out of it. It's because we don't understand the attributes of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so what happens is, is that a lot of folk are walking around with dreams and potential and vision and talent and idea and yeah, you met somebody had so much talent it was ridiculous. You ever met somebody so smart they were stupid? You're so smart, it's stupid. I, you know, please understand. And the reason a lot of the times that stuff, nothing happens with it, is because we're walking around with shackles on. Touch somebody say shackles. Please understand this. Unfaithfulness, please understand, if you walk around with shackles, it means somebody is your master. You understand that? You, you just don't walk around with shackles to make a statement. If you walk around with shackles, it's because somebody is your master. Do, do you understand that? That means somebody's going to tell you about your going and your coming. They're going to tell you when to sleep, when to eat, how to live. Unfaithfulness is a taskmaster. It's a slave owner. Do, 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 are you hearing what I'm saying? And unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness the inability to have faithful faith, it keeps you from living a life of faith. You, you didn't hear what I just said. Unfaithfulness is a slave owner that keeps you bound to a lack of faith. Now you say, Bishop, what does that mean? Without faithfulness or consistency, your faith won't work. Watch this. Watch this. If your faith won't work, then you can't have life. No, you missed that. Because what does the Bible say? The just shall live by faith. So if I'm unfaithful, that means my faith can't work. And if my faith can't work, that means my life is going to be horrible. Y'all here? So here's the deal. If I'm not living, then I'm just existing. Then I'm just breathing. I'm going through a routine just trying to pay somebody off. The sad thing about our lives sometimes is that we just live in the pay folk off and the reality is as Jesus said John 10 10 I am come that you might have life and life more but I didn't come for you to just pay folk off I didn't come for you to wake up and go home and eat and go to bed and do it all over again I came for you to have life somebody shout life so please understand this the question is can God trust you um, see the issue is not can we trust him because he's proven himself faithful to you it was him that kept you from dying in that accident. It was him that turned that judge's heart for your favor. It was him that made that relationship that should have been over a long time ago. And, but it was him that kept that together. Somebody say, God is faithful. But please understand, in God's faithfulness, his question is, can I trust y'all? His question is, can I fit into your schedule? I know you're real busy these days, but can I fit into your schedule? Can, can you make some time for me? Touch somebody and say, can God fit in your schedule? Please understand, what God does is God allows trouble in your life to see what you're going to be faithful to. Say faithful equals consistency. Please understand, faithfulness doesn't happen over the weekend. You don't all of a sudden become faithful because you, I've been said church. I'm faithful. Faithfulness is developed over what? Time. Please understand, it'd be ridiculous for somebody that got married yesterday to say, you know what, I've been being faithful to my wife. Well, congratulations. One day down. You think that person's ridiculous to say that. You say, what are you talking about? You've been faithful. It's been one day. Faithfulness is developed how? Over time. Watch this. God allows trouble in our lives to see what we're going to be consistent to, to see what we're going to keep doing, and to see what we stop doing. Uh, watch this. Proverbs 20 and 6 says this. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man, who can one find? Uh, watch this. Please understand. Uh, with the Israelites in Scripture, God's problem with them was their lack of faithfulness to him. Please understand, the Israelites, say Israelites, the Israelites had this kind of mentality. 
I'll serve them when I need something. As long as I got money in my pocket, food on the table, got that good job, God, you know, I'm tired on Sundays. It's my only day to rest. What if God was faithful to you like you were faithful to him? Now, let me say this. Please understand, I ain't trying to beat nobody down, so don't take this as the preacher trying to beat me down. Either. Please understand, I'm trying to get you to be faithful because your faith is never going to work until you're faithful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But please understand, please understand, his issue with them was that they only wanted to serve him when they needed something. So they make all these promises and all these vows. God, if you get me out of this, I promise you. Anybody have been there? Come on, let's be real. I know you got your halo on today and all that, but just take it off for a minute and be real. God, if you get me out of this, I pump. I'm going to be at church every Sunday. I'm going to join the deacon board, the usher board, the young people board, the old folk board, everybody board. Get me through this. And then for a few weeks. But as soon as you know you're scot-free. Come on, let's be real. Tell somebody, say, be real. Please understand this. God never asked us to be 100% perfect. But he asks for us to be consistent, faithful. Go to Deuteronomy 28.1. Deuteronomy 28.1. I want to teach this to you. Can I teach it to you today? Deuteronomy 28.1. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28.1. Now, we got to get this today. Tell somebody, say, you got to get it. Deuteronomy 28. Now, look at what God asked him to do. Deuteronomy 28 is a chapter where God says, if you obey me, I'll do you this way. If you disobey me, it's going to be like this. Now, please understand, in Scripture, when it says the Lord will do this, the Lord will do that, when it's dealing with negative stuff, what it literally means is God will remove his protection to allow stuff to happen. It's like an umbrella. As long as you're under that umbrella, you're good. But you step from up under that umbrella, you could be protected, but you're out here under the elements. See, people may say, well, why should I serve God? Because there's stuff that should happen to you that because you're covered by him, it misses you because it bounces off of your protection. It bounces off your umbrella. So you think it's bad now. Try going back and doing it your way and see how bad it gets. Tell somebody say, I am in my promised land. So watch this. Look at what he asked him to do. Verse 20, uh, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, or it shall happen, if you diligently obey. What does that mean? Faithfully obey. Consistently obey. So it doesn't mean if you make a mistake, you're on your way to hell. It means when I make one, whoops, I repent. I need to get right back in place, right back in the position, because I got to be faithful. I got to be consistent. Tell somebody, say, be consistent. So watch this. The thing about us, though, sometimes is we have a tendency to be faithful to things that are unfaithful to us. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. And then we wonder why we don't see any results. It's because an unfaithful man, and I'm going to show you this, the Bible says, cannot be trusted. It's amazing the stuff we'll be faithful to. And we won't be faithful to God, but we'll be faithful to that no good. You, you be faithful to folk that talk about you. And you know they talk about you. But because you want to be a name. And the reality is, is that if you're, un, if you're faithful to stuff that's unfaithful, you won't see any results. And I've said this, this is going to be my third time today. But you got to learn how to put your tears on schedule and be faithful. Meaning, listen, I got work to do, so I don't have time to be sitting up at work crying and all that. And Well, why he do me like that? Why she do me like that? Listen, I'll deal with that tonight. I'll cry tonight. But right now, I got something to handle. I got a kingdom to subdue. I got something to take over. God did not let me live so I could be miserable. I got to put my tears on schedule because I got to be faithful. Tell somebody to say faithful. Sitting there crying over stuff that don't make no mind. I'll get to you when I get to you. But right now, I put you on schedule. We'll cry Friday at 730. 
But right now is not the time. Tell somebody, say, it's not the time. Please understand, the Bible says, Galatians 6, 7 through 9, whatever we sow is what we're going to reap. Please understand, what you sow is always smaller than what you reap. You sow a mustard seed, yet you get a great harvest. You, you don't understand that. So if what I'm reaping is the harvest, if I keep sowing a bunch of crying and foolishness and unfaithfulness, I'm going to get a harvest of unfaithfulness. So if I can't be trusted, I can't get angry when nobody around me can be trusted because I'm reaping that thing I've sowed. Yep. Some of the reason in relationships there was infidelity is because don't forget, it wasn't but a couple years for that. that okay, y'all ain't going to say nothing. If you can't be trusted... I ain't going to get no runners, huh? Unfaithfulness, watch this, perpetuates the curse. Now, now watch this. Curse means this, an empowerment to fail. Watch this. It's one thing to be empowered. It's another thing to be empowered that everything you do won't work. Anybody ever felt like that? Let's be real. It's like, I, I do this and this don't work. I take two steps forward and then I, I, it seems like nothing's working. I says, you don't know, go to verse 20. I want to teach this to you. Say faithfulness. I says, you don't know, have 28, 20. You there? Watch this. Here's what it says. The Lord will send on you cursing. Now, remember, that just means he'll allow cursing, confusion, and rebuke. Watch this. And everything you set your hand to. Now, you missed it. God says, if I can't trust you, what did he ask you to do in verse 1? Be faithful. If I can't trust you to be faithful, then I got to allow there to be cursing in your life, confusion in your life, and everything you set your hand to won't work. I got to allow that. He's not doing it to you. He's got to allow it to happen. Watch this. Until you are what? Destroyed. And until you perish what? Quickly. Because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. So please understand, when we are unfaithful, God says, everything you set your hand to will never work. All right. Look at somebody say, I'm faithful. I don't know about yesterday, but today and this day forward, I'm faithful. Because I don't know about you, but I wasted enough time with stuff not working and stuff not going the way it should. I didn't waste it. Tell somebody, say, I wasted too much time. I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Go, to, go to verse 28. Second thing that happens, the verse 28. The Lord, again, will allow you with madness and blindness and confusion of your heart. Or, what's the heart mean? Your mind, your cardia, the seat of your thinking. What well, says? God says, if you're unfaithful, you'll never see what's obvious. And you'll be asking for a sign. God, give me a sign. Lord, if it's you, flip the lights. Lord, if it's you, let it rain. Lord, if it's you, let it rain. And God will say, it's been right in front of you the whole time. But because you're unfaithful, you can't even see what's obvious. It's been that whole time. What's this? And he says, with confusion of the heart or the mind. He says, when you're unfaithful, you'll never know what decision to make. Anybody have been like that? Come on, let's come on. Let's go again. Take your halos off. This is halo free zone right quick. You have been in a situation where you're like, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I'm coming or going, sitting or standing in the water or out the water. I don't know what I'm doing. God says that's what happens when you're unfaithful. Amen. Tell somebody to say, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Oh, watch this, because I ain't got time to not see what's right in front of me. Amen. Think of how many years we've wasted because we didn't see what was right there the whole time. Third thing that happens, go to Proverbs 20, 25 and 19. Proverbs 25 and 19. Um, uh, this is Proverbs 25 and 19. So, Bishop, why do I keep having you have us telling us, uh, our neighbor, that we're faithful? Because uh, you need to speak that thing into existence. Call things that be not. Proverbs 25 and 19. Y'all ready? Watch this. Confidence in an unfaithful, or that word trust. Or faith 
in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. So, so, so what does it mean? Say, here's the deal. If you're unfaithful, you'll never have good relationships. I'm not just talking about dating and marriage. I'm talking about friends. Friends. How many? If you're unfaithful, all of your relationships will be rocky. They don't trust you. You don't trust them. So y'all just walk around and play the, play the, the duck, duck, deuce game. Who going to cheat who this time? Because you ain't faithful and I ain't faithful, so we ain't getting no faithfulness handled. Y'all ain't going to say nothing. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, I'm faithful. I'm faithful. Last thing I want to show you what unfaithfulness does. Go to Malachi chapter 2. It's the book right before Matthew, Malachi chapter 2. Now this is the bomb right here. Amen. He said, Bishop, why are you showing us all this stuff? Because sometimes we need to be encouraged to be faithful. And sometimes knowing what happens when we're unfaithful can encourage us to be faithful. Y'all ain't talking. Sometimes you don't know what you have until it threatens to walk out the door. And so you need to know what's going to happen if you're unfaithful. Are you here? Malachi chapter 2, verse 2, when you have a say amen. Watch this. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, what does that mean? Hear it, do it, be faithful to it. Amen. To give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts. Lord of hosts means the Lord that does battle for you. I will send. You go ahead and read it. God says, if you're unfaithful, even the stuff I did for you won't work no more. This, this is pretty heavy stuff, right? I, so look at him, tell him again, say, I'm faithful. Uh, I, I, listen, God done done too much for me. I can't have him cursing what he didn't bless me with already. So God says, if you're unfaithful, even the stuff I gave you that was a good thing, you ever wonder how something start out so good and be good and be good for a year and then all of a sudden it just unfaithfulness is the root of that. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Please understand this. So watch this. An unfaithful saint, Christian, an unfaithful saint has dead faith. Dead faith equals a poor quality of life since the just have to live by faith. We don't live by Obama. We don't live by Democrat, Republican, no matter who in the house. We live by faith. But to have faith, I got to be. You know why? Because you can't understand faith if you've never been faithful to anything. Because here's faith. Can I just teach? I just want to teach. Here's faithfulness. Here's how it works. God says, listen, the reason why so many of us have a problem trusting God is because you can't trust you. Amen. And if your word is no good, it's hard to believe somebody's word you can't see. But when I'm consistent and when I'm faithful, I don't have a problem knowing he's going to be faithful. So that's why I can't have faith unless I'm faithful. Are right, you hear what I'm saying? Go, 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 go to James chapter 2. I got a little time. James chapter 2. James chapter 2, uh, I want you to go to verse 17. Y'all learning? Because we got to get in what? Position. And faithfulness puts you in position. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. See, some of you have been thinking, God, I've been serving you all these years. Has it been doing anything? God says, absolutely. <laughs> it's been teaching you how to have faith. Faith's not developed overnight. Why does Paul say fight the good fight of faith? Must mean sometimes it's going to be hard to be faithful. Amen. It's going to be sometimes I don't feel like being consistent. It's going to be sometimes I feel like flaking. But I, that's not an attribute of the spirit. So guess what? I got to be faithful because Abram was faithful. And since he was faithful and I'm his seed, got to do what he did. Are you here? So James chapter 2, verse number 17. 
Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have what? Works or action, it's dead. But someone will say, you, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. So you want to know if somebody's faithful, stop listening to what they say and watch what they do. You ever notice people know how to talk a good game? Maybe I'll give you the sun, the moon, the rain, the stars. I'll give you everything and more. All that I got. They know what to say. But when it comes down to it, if they didn't get a last one that. Chance is pretty good you ain't getting that either. You, you ain't saying nothing. You better settle for a star because you ain't getting no sun and moon. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They'll do you a picture of it. They'll print you something off the internet. See, I told you, I'll give it to you. Watch this. Verse 19, you believe there's one God. You do well. Even the demons do that. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Here's the connection. Connect the dots. Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. Meaning, my faith. Faithfulness makes my faith work. So when I get up to pray every day, even though I sure don't feel like it, I'm making my faith work. Y'all ain't going to be real to me. Sometimes you on a Sunday you wake up and say, my God, I could use a couple extra hours of sleep, but I got to be faithful because I need my faith to work. There's some Wednesdays I just want to go home and eat and go to bed, but my faith is being tested, and I got to be faithful if my faith, y'all ain't going to say nothing. I says, so what have you used your faith to bring to you? If you can't faith it out, you can't faith it in. So if I can't give you faithfulness, I can't get results. If I can't trust God with my money, I can't expect no kind of harvest. If I'm single and I can't trust God to bring me somebody opposed to going down to Sugar Shack and seeing who out there. You're going to find what you're looking for. And let me just help some single folk. If they shake it for free. If they putting all that out there for no charge at all. I'm just telling you, you're going to get what you're looking for. But no, this one different. They, they had, uh, you know, gospel music on their iPod. They was just there with their friends. I'm telling you, you're going to find what you're faithful to. And if you're faithful to what's unfaithful, don't be disappointed. Y'all ain't talking. I, is that a real place, Sugar Shack? It's all the same. I says, I says, I says, look at somebody say, be faithful. So if I'm faithful to God, I got to ask myself this question. What's important to him? Because if I'm faithful to stuff that's unimportant to him, he's not impressed. Without faith, it's impossible to do what? Make him happy. Got it? Without consistency, faithfulness, God is never, watch this, listen to me, he always will love you. He just will never be able to trust you with anything. Amen. Do you understand the difference? See, a lot of people think, oh, well, God don't love, no, he loves you unconditionally. The Bible says you can make your bed in hell, and he still loves you, and he's still there. But if he can't trust you with faithfulness, then he can't trust you with anything other than what you work to get. Because favor is only given where faithfulness is found. 
You don't give favor to somebody you just met yesterday. Favor is given to somebody that's been consistent and been faithful. On your job, you've been there two weeks. Quit asking for stuff that the folk that been there eight years ain't got yet. You need to prove to them you're faithful and you're consistent. Uh. So the question is, what's important to God? Seeking the God's attributes, heaven's attributes on earth, God's modus operandi, how he does what he does. Seek what God likes first. And his righteousness, which is a done deal because you're in Christ, and all these things. Problem with most saints is we seek money. And we seek stuff. Lord, give me a way to make some more money. We seek relationships. Lord, I think this is the one. Confirm it. If it's you, flick the lights. Amen. See, the reason some of y'all ain't said nothing because you did that just yesterday. That's on your prayer list. Father, if this is the one, I know it's you because my light's going to flick at 1023. Go out in the house. Are you getting what I'm saying? So what happens is, is we got to find out what's faithful or what's important to him. So let's find out. We want to find out? Let's go to Luke chapter 4. Let's find out what's important to Jesus. Everybody want to say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Let's find out what he would do. Christian, to be like him. For everybody to think he was just dusty road, walking around with robes and begging folk, that's wrong. That ain't what he did. Jesus had, he, he showed you how to build a mega ministry. Jesus was sent out promotion teams to go to cities before he'd get there so that he'd make sure that the crowds were going to be there. You understand that? Well, oh, I says, right, Luke 4, 16. You ready? Let's find out what was important to him when he was on earth so we can find out what he wants us to do today. So he came to Nazareth where he had been and as his, what does that mean? What he was faithful to. Go, go ahead and read it. Wait a minute, it looks like Jesus was faithful at going to church. Right, I just want you to read again, because I just so you don't think this is the Bishop Foreman version of the Bible or something. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his... Go ahead. Now, he was a Jew, so the Jews went and they celebrated on what the Sabbath was. Today, Christ is our eternal Sabbath, our eternal rest. But he went to church every week. Consistently. They didn't have midweek back then. He's there every week. Here he is ministering to thousands of people across the, across, the, across the land. Yet he made sure, come Friday night, Sabbath was Saturday, come Friday night, oh, I got to be back at church. So whatever you're trying to plan and vacation, and that's nice, Judas and Peter and them, that's all nice, but look, I got to be back for church. Because I got to be consistent and faithful. Yeah, it's, it's where my amens go. I don't, I don't, I don't hear them. Uh, uh, please understand this. Uh, there are not very many good reasons not to come to church. Uh, I haven't talked about this before, but I just want to help you because understand this. At church, is the pulpit is called a desk, sacred desk. It's where you're taught the word. So you'll never know God because God has to be taught and caught. You'll never get the taught part if you're not consistent at being a learner. So none of the other stuff's going to work if he can't trust you with the very basic. You can be in the third heaven all you want, write your vision and write your prayer list and all that and send in your handkerchief and call, and call folk and send your money around. It's amazing. Folk know more about folk on TV than they do what's going on in their own house. So-and-so was preaching on this. Well, what did I preach last week? What? So there's not very many good reasons not to come. I was tired. Okay. 
Your point is, you come in here for an hour and a half, two hours tops. Lately, I've been doing it. I've been in it 90 minutes tops. So you can give God the first fruit of your week. He gives you all them other days. Keeps you safe all the rest of that time. All he asks you for is an hour and a half on Sunday. Well, I just, I've been trying to seek what God wants me to be. Listen. Bible says sheep know the voice of their shepherd. What when you heard the voice, you automatically knew. Thing is, is can, can I can I can I, can I make a confession to y'all? I mean, you know, I got time. Watch this. I, I was there was several years, several, several years ago before I was on this side and, and several years ago and uh, and there was a preacher and, and she'd come on TV. There's a woman preacher, she'd come on TV. And because what she was preaching was so good. And so it dealt with me. Every time I heard it, I'm like, oh, Lord, I got to do this. I got to do that. And it's convicting. That's called conviction. That's a good thing. Amen. If don't none of your toes get stepped on and don't none of your Kool-Aid get stirred, you're in the wrong place. Because you keep thinking it's the devil, the devil, the devil. Honey, the devil ain't got all that power we be giving him. So she'd come on TV, and every time I'd see her on, I'd be like, oh, God. I'd watch about two minutes, and then I'd flip the channel. Because I said, I don't want to have to be accountable for what she's going to say. On, you missed what I just said. I said, it's so good and it's convicted me so good that I don't even want to sit and listen to it because it's going to make me change. And what I found out about this house and this church, the bread God's given is so good that some folk would rather go sit and learn nothing so that they don't have to change. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I'd much rather go sit and learn nothing and know nothing and do nothing and just talk, think happy thoughts and take high roads and still be messed up, still be jacked up, opposed to getting a word that's going to challenge me and make me realize all my problems ain't the devil. Maybe there's some stuff I got that y'all ain't going to say nothing. Well, I this. Let me say this. And don't judge for while they're learning God. That. Don't judge folk while they you different uh, you're in a different place on your journey. So if somebody's in a, uh, over here on their journey, don't judge them. You so spiritual. The Bible says you being spiritual restore them. Pray for folk. Stop saying to folk you ain't you you supposed to be a Christian. You heard folk like that. Ain't you a Christian? Don't you go to church? You got to learn to tell people, listen, I do go to church, and you know what? I'm in treatment. It's a hospital. It's a training ground. So I'm in treatment. So we ain't got to that part yet of my treatment. Y'all ain't going to be real with me. If God can trust you to be consistent to doing what he did, going to church. Watch this. Go to 2 Timothy 3.7. Y'all all right? 2 Timothy 3.7. If he can trust you to be faithful to going to church where you can be taught the word, then you can get to the second step of this thing. Are you ready? 2 Timothy 3 and verse 7, when you have it, say amen. It's not enough to just come and raise your hands and put in your time. Amen. Amen. How many, let's be honest, how many people at some point or another you thought, okay, I need to go to church because I was telling somebody I need to cross it off my weekly list of things to do. I need to put, you know, so can the real, please, somebody, I know it's at least more than two. I need to put in my time this week. I need to go clock in. I ain't talked to him all week. Let's go clock in. So you know I'm still around. It's not enough to just go. 2 Timothy 3, 7, ready, read. Stop, watch this. Watch this. He says, you can be sitting in a place where knowledge is coming forth, and you're always learning new stuff, but the only thing you're doing is saying, ooh, that was good. You'll never take it home. You'll never open your notes. You'll never listen to the CD. You'll never, and so then you say, God, why ain't it working? Because faithfulness don't happen over the weekend. So what I say to you today, please understand, you're going to remember 30% of it. You understand? And so what happens is if you try to go through the week, you're going to be like, what if Bishop just, you know, just, you know, uh, faithful? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you remember? None of this other stuff. 
it's not enough to just be learning. You've got to come into the knowledge of truth. What does that mean? I got to apply what I'm being taught. Because the difference between where you are and where you want to be is the knowledge you get and use. So people say knowledge is power. That's a lie. I know a lot of smart folks that don't have nothing. Smart. I mean, just got a vocabulary. You need a dictionary with you to, to figure out what they're saying. Now, what is that? Yet they have no fruit to show for. Therefore, knowledge by itself can't be power. Applied knowledge is power. Y'all ain't going to talk. I'm, I'm about through. I'm about through. So watch this. If I'm faithful in applying what's taught, because remember, these two are the basics, because everything else falls into place. My relationships fall into place. Career falls into place. Finances fall into place. Everything falls into place when I can be trusted to come to church and apply what I'm taught at church. Now you see why it's important? It's just not about going to fill up a room and have a saved people meeting and shout and buck and all that and leave and not do nothing. It's about being consistent and being faithful so God says, now I can trust you with something because I can trust you to show up every Sunday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, want to know how to be faithful? Here it is right here. Psalm 119, 29. I'm going to read it to you for the sake of time. You can write it down. Remo this is David talking. Remove from me the way of falsehood and unfaithfulness to you and graciously impart your word to me. That's amplified. Here's what it means. If I'm unfaithful to those two basic things, I need to say, Lord, remove from me my unfaithfulness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> so in other words, what is he saying to do? Repent. Say, God, you know what? I ain't been faithful and because I didn't realize how important it was. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It, see, listen, sometimes all it takes is one word. And one word changes everything. And you didn't hear what I said. One word can change everything. The reason we're on national TV today, the glory to God, is because of one word somebody gave me. The reason we're touching churches all around the world is because of one word somebody gave. Look at somebody say one word. So the first thing you got to do is realize where you've been unfaithful and repent. What does repent mean? Change directions. You understand? So, Lord, if I've been a one among her, then I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to start with just getting here next week. Before I go sit down and make my five-year plan about how I'm going to get in this, I'm going to be a deacon, I'm going to be an L, I'm going to be this, I'm going to start preaching, all that. Let me just show up next week. And once I conquer that mountain, well, let's work on a Wednesday. All right, here we go. But now, it's not enough to come. Now, Lord, let me take myself in that resource center. I know I'm antisocial and don't want to be in lines. But let me get in the line. It's all right to talk to the person next to me. Everybody in there warm and friendly. And let me stand for two and a half minutes so I can get the tape. Or, you know. So now when I get in my car, as opposed to listening to all that mess, I can put the tape in. Y'all know me. I can put the 8-track in myself. I can put that in. And now on my way home, because see, here's what's going to happen. The moment you leave out of here, you get in that parking lot. Some of you going to turn your cell phone back on. You got five messages. Uh -huh. yeah. And you're going to check the first one and say, oh, God. <laughs> now all of the word you just got, gone. Amen. Just like that. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So the first thing we got to do is we've got to repent. And, and, and we got to look at where we've been unfaithful. So if you've been unfaithful on your job. Show up late, let you clock in like you was there on time. Now they got computers, so they try to keep you from doing that now. But please understand. And then you, 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 you take a break, but, you know, your break's supposed to be 15 minutes, but, you know, you got the attitude, but, you know, I didn't come here to work anyhow. I didn't, you know. <laughs> These people got one more thing to say to me. One more thing. Let her come over here one more time. One more time. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on now. Now, I know I, I try to be real so we can deal with real life. You understand? If they email me about this thing, what well, I told them last week, I don't know where it... Uh, But you got to be faithful. Are you getting this? Favor is given where faithfulness is found. Let me leave you with this. You got to be faithful like a spider. Now, let me tell you, I hate them. I, I, I do not like spiders. Hate is a strong word. and It's in the Bible. I hate spiders. I hate them. I just can't stand them. You understand? I see one. I, I will call somebody before I go mess with that thing and say, come around here and deal with this. You understand? I, listen, you can call me chicken scared. You can call me whatever you want, but I bet you ain't going to get bit. You can, you can call me whatever you want, but I bet you it ain't going to get on me. I will go get the vacuum hose before I take my shoe off. You understand me? And put on the extension piece. The Bible says I have authority over the serpents and the crawling and creeping things. I ain't got to mess with it. I can vacuum it up. Come on, somebody. So funny, a few services ago, I was as I was talking about something, one was coming down right on my chair. I said, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Watch this. You gotta be faithful like a spider. Here's what a spider does. A spider uses his enemies for food. In other words, when stuff starts coming against me, since I'm faithful, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna suck the blood out of that. In other words, when folks start talking about me, that's gonna give me energy to keep going. Because it must mean there's something about me that folk like. Why am I that important that you spent your whole day talking, discussing what's going on? Well, it must be something about me. So I'm going to get the blood, the life out of my enemies. Watch this. A, fa a faithful spider, they're faithful. It will prosper. And it doesn't matter if it's in the city or the country. You know why? Because the moment you're knocking down one of its webs, what you didn't know is it had already left because it saw you coming. It's in the other corner and building another one. It's consistent. Are you understand what I'm saying? Please understand this. And a spider, it strikes fear. I ain't scared. I just don't believe messing with them now. I ain't never scared. I just. Watch this. Here's what it does. It strikes fear in the hearts of things that are thousands of times bigger than it. You, you, you missed it. You, you, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. A little old spider makes me go into my closet and pull out my vacuum cleaner, which is at least a million sometimes bigger than the spider. Get the hose out, plug it in the wall. I go through all of that trouble to go get some. Ain't nothing but this big. What is it that your enemy knows about you? that you don't know about yourself. There must be something about you that scares Satan. There must be something about you that scares the enemy. The fact that you keep going through all the stuff you're going through. There Tell somebody, say, there must be something about you. And here's what the last thing the spider does. You ready? Sometimes when I can't get to the vacuum, I get my nearest bottle of Windex. Now, y'all playing, but some of y'all did it yesterday. It don't have to be Windex. Any liquid substance other than water, I can get my hands on. I'll spray air freshener on a spider. You understand me? That little joker walk around be spring fresh. And I'll go get the bottle, and you know, because I can't get too close to it, because you know, I'll be one that's going to be one of them jumping ones, jump on out you, you know. It's Denver, you know. So I get my little spray bottle, and I'll stand way back here and start spraying. But you know what it does? It starts running. And by the time, because remember, you're jumping while you're spraying. Then you look to see whether or not you caught it. By the time you look down, what you tried to use to destroy the spider, the spider said, I'm not the one. I got too much left to do. So I'm going to get over here. 
And then it gets in a place where you can't even find it. And then two weeks later, when the enemy comes in like a, the Lord's going to lift up a standard against him. If God be for us, who? Everybody stand on your feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say faithful. faithful. Glory to God. Now watch this. Uh, I want to challenge us today in our faithfulness to God. I want to challenge us today. If maybe you're not a consistent church attender, I want to challenge you to be consistent. Amen. 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 Why? Not, not just, please understand, I don't care about just filling another seat. That doesn't make me no difference. It's for your sake. Because when you can be trusted to be faithful, to come to church, God says, now I can trust you. Not just coming to church. Now, if you're here every week, but you don't never take no notes, uh -huh. and you don't have not one of them blue CDs, Amen. Amen. I won't challenge you Amen. to right after service, I know Golden Corral's waiting on you. The food's still going to be hot when you get there. You understand? And besides, you don't want to go now because folks are just getting out. You need to wait to about two or so. But here's reality. I want to challenge you to get the word and consistently listen to it. You hear what I'm saying? Last night, uh, I, was, I was watching TV before I was, uh, before I was going to sleep. I was watching TV and, you know, all that. You know, you, you know how you leave the TV on and it, 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 it watches you. Go to sleep. It's on TV. And as I was watching TV, what happened is, 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 is they were talking about something with the whole government and stimulus and all this. And so in my dream, I dreamed about a, the government stimulus plan. No, no, you, you missed it. I'm sitting here with open access to heaven. And my dream is about a $787 billion bill. And in my dream, the whole time I keep waking up because I keep asking myself, why didn't they read it? <laughs> I'm just telling you what my dream was. I'm saying what my dream is. Listen, what are you trying to say? When you listen to the word, even passively, just having it in your car, when you go to bed, all of a sudden that word is going to start speaking to you in your dreams. In the last days, I'd pour out my spirit on all flesh. And you hear what I'm saying? Father, we come to you today. We repent right now, God, for unfaithfulness. In any area of our life. And we declare God. That we are going to be faithful people. We're going to be faithful to you God. Because we want you to be able to trust us. We want to be able to live those dreams. And visions and ideas that you've given us. We want to be able to walk that out. And we declare by faith today God. That we're going to do that. In Jesus name. Thank you for tuning in to today's life giving message. Harvest exists to change lives by leading people to totally love God, love people and love life as one church in global locations. And if you have a testimony of how Harvest has changed your life, let us know on our website contact us page. We're able to continue to change lives because of the faithful giving of people just like you. And if you'd like to contribute to Harvest financially, you can do so today online at www.harvestcc.me. Remember to love God, love people and love life.